Hello once again, and thank you for joining us to another wonderful discussion on the subject, Understanding the Self. Today, we will be discussing the physical self. Now, this lesson discusses several aspects of physical self and identity, including physical concept is shaped by both physical ability and appearance, as well as cultural beauty standards. Now, genetics and biological development strongly influence physical characteristics like body structure, height, skin color, through heredity, of course. Now, societal forces like family, friends, media, and culture impact body image and self-esteem by promoting certain body ideals and norms. Now, developing a positive body image involves accepting all body types and focusing less on physical appearance. But let's be realistic here. When we talk about physical self, often than not, what is first seen is, of course, our physical attributes. Okay, our skin color, our skin type, our height, our weight, um, how we dress, how we move, how we act. Now, all of this in the context of beauty today is, let's say, often than not, is included in the standards of the society. But I hope that at the end of this lesson, we will truly appreciate the beauty of physical self. All right? Now, let's begin by defining what physical self is. Now, the physical self refers to your body, our body. Now, the physical self is the concrete dimension, the tangible aspect of the person that can be directly observed and examined. Now, it is uh, very important to understand that physical self is defined by the physical characteristics that are visible. All right? Again, the physical self is defined by the physical characteristics that are visible. Now, these characteristics are defining traits and features of the body. Now, the physical aspect of the self does not include characteristics that are internal to the self, such as, of course, kindness, generosity, loyalty, obedience, and other similar qualities. Now, to further understand the physical self, I would like you to understand the meaning of self-understanding. According to Sandrock, 2004, self-understanding is the individual's cognitive representation of the self, meaning this is how you think, how you view yourself, which consists of the substance and the content of self-conceptions. Now, the development of self-understanding in adolescence can be described from simple to perplex and involves number of aspects of the self. Now, furthermore, I'd like you to differentiate growth from development and maturation. Growth refers to the physical and biological changes. Often than not, it is attributed to the quantitative qualities that we have, okay? To the quantitative aspects, things that are measurable. Let's say your weight, your height, okay? Those are examples of growth. And um, growth is not lifelong, okay? Once you reach a specific, let's say, height, okay, based on your genetic attributes, then that would be your height. And your, your growth will end there based on height. Okay? So it's quantitative. Now, development relates to function and behavioral changes. Often than not, development is also associated with qualities. Okay, let's say, for example, okay, uh, your handwriting is an example of development. The, the, your handwriting differs from the time when you were still in kindergarten up to when you were in college. Okay, so that's um, development, meaning there is progress. There are changes happening over time, and development is also lifelong. Okay. Now, learning refers to adapting to environmental conditions, and maturation refers to a transition into an adult-like state regarding some sort of skill or behavior. Okay, so the, the, that's okay. How we view growth from development and maturation. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about 
physical characteristics. Now, the, the physical characteristics speaks of the defining traits or features of the person's body. Okay, physical characteristics are distinguished by, let's say, your naked eye, like fe facial features, hairstyle, clothes, or figure. Again, these are, um, you know, seen by the naked eye. They are readily observable. They are seen as part of your features. Okay, now according to Eric Erickson, he believed in the importance of the body from early development because of because the physical as intellectual skills will somehow serve as a basis for whether a person has achieved a sense of competence, even confidence. Okay, let's admit it. A lot of people feel insecurity, low self-esteem, inferiority complex because of how they look. And we often feel jealousy somehow, particularly in our Filipino culture, where uh, beauty is based on uh, your pale skin, your height, etc. Okay, so uh, the development of these physical attributes affect a person's sense of competence and confidence. And of course, uh, as life progresses, uh, how you manage your, your these physical features and how you improve them, particularly uh, this demands uh, very complex things in life. Um, this physical attribute is actually, as I mentioned, what uh, the observable traits and attributes that we have. And we have this saying, first impression last. And uh, how we project ourselves physically has a, has a big impact to those around us and, of course, to ourselves. According to William James, he considered that the body as the initial source of sensation and the necessary and necessary for the origin and maintenance of personality okay now i have this question or before we i go to that question i would like to uh, emphasize also uh, the concept of puberty now according to healthychildren.org adolescence is divided into three periods we have early adolescence which is from 11 to 14 years old middle adolescence, which is from 15 to 17 years old, and late adolescence, which is 18 to 21 years old. Now, in the Philippines, ages from 15 to 30 years old are considered youth. Okay, please take note of that. And according to Sandra, puberty is the same as adolescence because puberty ends prior to the end of adolescent period. But he recognized puberty as the most essential marker of the beginning of adolescence. Now remember, girls reach puberty earlier than boys, and they experience a menarche. Again, what is menarche? Menarche is the first menstrual flow. Now, if girls uh, have menarche, boys have spermarche. Spermarche is actually the first ejaculation or wet dream that a boy experiences, and actually it marks the start of puberty. Okay, puberty is actually a brain neuroendocrine process occurring primarily in early adolescence that triggers the rapid physical changes that occur in the adolescent stage of human development. So whether we like it or not, puberty is also biological, meaning it's a natural phenomena that we all experience. So it's natural to undergo puberty. And with puberty also comes the changes in our body. We experience um, the secondary change or the second the development of the secondary characteristics. Okay, let's say for example for for boys, they have deeper voices because of the development of their Adam's apple. For ladies, they have the development of their, their breasts or, or the physical development of their breasts. Of course, the their hips are becoming more prominent etc. Okay, so with physical aspects or with the development of the physical self comes this development of the secondary characteristics. Now, I have this important question which I would like you to answer. Now, when is a person considered beautiful? Now, what is the socially acceptable standard of beauty? Now, I would like you to share your answers in the chat box. Please pause this video and again answer these two questions. When is a person considered beautiful? And what is the socially accepted standard of beauty?
Okay, please pause this video and answer that question or answer those questions. All right, thank you for participating. Now, the purpose of beauty is the feeling and consequences of being beautiful. All right, to emphasize that. Um, it's a feeling. Beauty is actually a feeling. And of course, there's these consequences. In ancient cultures, according to Julian Robinson, the enhancement and beautifying of the human form by various means appeared to be an inborn human trait. So the, the goal, our, let's say, actions towards improving ourselves and becoming beautiful is an inborn human trait, according to Julian Robinson. It is already within us. It's innate for us to improve ourselves and to, of course, attain beauty. An essential part of our genetic makeup and an, ex an expression of our psyche. Now, human beauty is an expression of this inventive and aesthetic nature, a reflection of our inner spirit. A biological imperative sculpted into our soul by some seemingly godlike life force about which we can do little except accept its reality and validity. And, you know, uh, that this is why genetic plays a, an important role also okay, in our beauty, in our physical self. Because there are traits that we cannot go away with it. It is something that we've inherited. It's passed on to us. And though we also consider environmental factors to be important, but, you know, technology and those products are limited as to, let's say, for example, when you reach a certain height uh, biologically, then there's nothing you can do about it. Even if you, you take uh, supplements like whatever, it, whatever that is, I, sorry, I was about to say a, a product name, but I stopped myself because I don't want to advertise that in this video. But nonetheless, uh, even though we take so much supplements, it can just do little uh, because of that genetic inheritance that we have. And so according to Julia Robinson, we just have to accept its reality and you know, do something or perhaps uh, uh, do something in order for us to improve ourselves in that particular aspect. Now, both genders are aware of the societal need to embellish them, to improve them, to in order to achieve something that is closer to the ideal. Okay, People have endured some sort of process to beautify themselves, and in each culture, the process varies. You know, I am convinced that beauty is actually a product of culture. And... The perspective and the idea of beauty depends on which group, which society, which culture you belong. Later on, I'll be giving some examples, and I believe this will shock you. Uh, and, and there are certain practices uh, from uh, that other cultures are doing, which for us might seem absurd, but for them, it's truly beautiful. Now. Robinson makes a valid point that human beauty is an expression of this inventive and aesthetic nature. Okay, again, it is an expression. Okay, um, and again, I would like to emphasize that this expression is often than not a result of the group's belief, norm, practices, and uh, you know, uh, it is a reflection of our inner spirit and a biological imperative sculpted to our. But now I would like you to look at this beauty gallery. I've actually compiled a beauty gallery across the globe. So if you look at the pictures, you'll see a man and a woman with tattoo, a lady with long earlobes, a long giraffe-like neck from, from cayenne women, etc. Now across the globe, Few people have difficulty re recognizing someone who is considered beautiful. Beauty is often sought after, revered, and sometimes interpreted as a personal value or virtue. You know, let's accept it or not, whether we accept it or not, we are all after looking beautiful. We all want to look beautiful, right? And who does not? Or who does not like to be beautiful? Okay? Standards of beauty, however are determined by cultural status, social acceptance, and suitability 
when finding a mate. Okay? And, and you know, in the old practice, and I believe until now, the reason why you want to be beautiful is because you're looking for a partner, right? And uh, often than not, we we uh, uh, adapt or we try to, uh, you know, uh, appear beautiful based on the standards that our partners or that, that particular partner is looking for. So, you know, however, beauty remains an elusive notion. Okay, like say, for example, in number one, okay, as you can see, the Tamako tattoos in New Zealand, face tattoos. Tattooing the chain and lips of Maori women of New Zealand is considered beautiful. Okay, tattooing the chin and lips of Maori women of New Zealand is considered beautiful. So imagine you how, how painful is that? No, to put tattoo in your lips. Okay, this tradition has been around for centuries and consists of patterns called tamako in black or dark blue ink on the women's face. Okay, so of course because of they they want to have mates or they want to have partners, and, and since the guy or the gentleman in New Zealand during that time finds this beautiful. So women have no choice but to, to perform uh, tattooing. Okay? Another, the decorated skin okay, of a kumkum in India, okay, including henna, nose rings, etc. Okay, instead of accessorizing with extravagant jewelry, women in India turn to nose rings. That's why you know, in the past, you've seen a lot of pictures of women with many nose rings, bindis, and henna to make themselves more attractive for festivals and celebrations, particularly weddings. And this is their definition of beauty. Okay, in Kenya, okay, uh, as you can see in the picture, the long earlobes. To the Maasai tribe of Kenya, long stretched earlobes are the ideal for both men and women. They are known to shave their heads and use everything from elephant tusks to twigs to pierce and stretch their lobes to become more attractive. Wow, this is actually uh, pain, okay? I mean, uh, I, I, I believe there's this saying, uh, there is no gain without pain, okay? Um, and <laughs> this is uh, a painful beautification. All right. Imagine they they will be using elephant tusks or twigs, which are not which are not even, um, you know, sanitized, to pierce their earlobes, and this they believe is attractive for them. All right. Another one. Okay. The long necks, uh, the long giraffe-like neck of Cayenne women. Okay. Um, the long necks. Okay, long giraffe-like necks are the ultimate, imagine that word, the ultimate sign of beauty and female elegance to the Cayenne tribe. At five years old, okay, it's, it begins at the age of five, Cayenne women start priming or priming their necks with heavy brass rings. Again, those are not just ordinary rings. Those are heavy brass rings and each year so they begin putting those at the age of five and each year more coils are added pushing down their shoulders and creating the effect of a longer neck the rings in the centuries old ritual can weigh up to 22 pounds wow imagine that the strain the pain and the burden of carrying those long coils just to look beautiful, all right? Now, again, this might sound or look absurd to us, for us, but um, this is their belief. And with this, this typically shows that culture really has an impact into how we define beauty. Okay, of course, let us not forget the pale skin in Korea or now we call it the tomato glass skin. Women in many Asian countries avoid the sun at all, okay? And uh, they even wear these big hats or they use umbrellas just to simply attain the pale skin, the ultimate sign of beauty and desirability. Now, contrary to Western culture, where ladies are keen to get a tan during the summer, tan is the latest popular color, especially in Korea. So uh, that's why... Uh, particularly here in our country, 
um, there are so many beauty products available. We don't even know which product to choose from because of, uh, you know, the 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 uh, the the desire and uh, the aspiration to to have this pale skin. Okay, um, and, and this is the trend now, actually. Okay, another one is the full figures in Maur Mauritania. Okay, when you say full figures, to them, fat figure is beautiful. Okay, um, in Mauritania, females with full figures are considered incredibly beautiful. Beautiful, And think women are considered physically undesirable. Okay, Mauritanian parents will even send their girls to fat camps. Okay, where their girls would eat up to 16,000 calories a day to prepare for marriage. Wow. Okay. On top of that, stretch marks are considered a bonus. So the more stretch marks that you have, the more beautiful you are for them. That's in Mauritania. Another one, the bad body scars of Karo tribe in Ethiopia. Now, sacrification of the body is a practice specifically among populations with dark skin, too dark to show tattoos. The Karo tribe of Ethiopia scar men and women's torsos and chest to assert social status. Men's scar mark the number of enemies killed in battles, while women's scars represent sensuality and appeal. So they will, you know, put deliberately put scars in their bodies just to appear beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, similarly, in the long earlobes in Kenya, the lip plate of Suri instead of putting putting it in their their earlobes, they're now putting it in their lips. Okay, the left plates, uh, Suri people of Ethiopia find beauty represented in women's lip plates. Now, when a girl reaches puberty, her bottom teeth are removed. Wow. Okay, that must be very painful. Okay, the, to make way for a piercing in the lower lip. Once the piercing is in place, the lip is stretched around a clay plate. And take note, larger plates signal a more valuable and desired women. I can't imagine how do they kiss each other with that plate on their lips, all right? Now, um, I, I think we're familiar with this, the foot binding in China. But now I believe this is already stopped um, because of the severe pain and uh, trauma it causes to women. Now, despite being banned in the 1940s, foot binding was a huge part of Chinese culture. The process of foot binding included breaking all of the toes and bending them backwards against of the sole of the foot. You now that is actually metal, and they actually wear that um, when they are still kids, and they don't remove that so as to bend their the sole of the foot, okay, and then binding them in a place with a tight fabric wrapping. How oh, that is too painful to bear okay the result was small and petite feet which is considered highly attractive back then in china and last one the mono brows while filipino women always want their brows to be on flick by plucking or shaving the women of tajikistan embrace their natural eyebrows and will even draw on them to make it appear that they have a mono brow just one brow a one line okay i guess mono brows are in style in tajikistan okay now the influence of media nowadays is, um, let's say, beyond limits, okay? Particularly the ad on the adolescent's understanding of beauty. Now, the mass media play a critical role in people's self-image by informing and reflecting what people consider to be beautiful or attractive. Now, one of the ways in which they do so is through the common use of every thin and attractive models in print and other media often termed the thin ideal, which communicate the way that people believe they should look in order to be attractive and desirable to others. Now, uh, with the different advertisements of beauty products, you know, they've been using, of course, models, even as, as actors and actresses, just to promote the stereotype of beauty. Okay? There are different aspects of appearance about which the media can convey beauty, uh, including hair, skin, and facial features. Now, the media has increasingly become a platform that reinforces cultural beliefs and projects strong views on how we should look at we, uh, or that we as individuals often unknowingly or knowingly validate and perpetuate. 
So the more we look or the more we scan the social media, the more we are influenced by several products, by different products, uh, and of course, by their definition of what beauty is. Uh, particularly the adolescents and the young people, they're very much easily influenced by this, this uh, idea of beauty. Okay, so now uh, in relation to this, I would like you to remember the difference between self-esteem and body image. Now, self-esteem is all about how, how much you feel your worth and how you how much you feel other people value again when you say self-esteem this is your worth this is how you see your worth and this is how the people around you value you okay well body image is how you view your physical self including whether you feel you're attractive or whether others like your looks now self-esteem again is all about how much you feel your worth okay self-esteem affects how you take care of yourself Okay, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And I tell you, once your self-esteem is destroyed, this will take a great toll, not only in your physical body, but also in your mental, uh, emotional, and social aspects of life. Now, body image is how you view your physical self. Again, uh, whether you feel you're attractive or not. Now, body image and self-esteem directly influence one another. When you have healthy body image, you feel comfortable about how your body and know how to take care of it. So, um, you know, the key here is, of course, acceptance. We have to accept that uh, we are all different, that we are granted, we are gifted with this body. And with this body comes the different attributes and characteristics that we've inherited from our parents. Okay, the first step of beauty, I believe, is self-acceptance. All right? Now, here are ways to improve our self-esteem. Okay, number one, make a list of the stuff that you're good at. When we, nowadays, definition of beauty is no longer limited to physical attributes, okay? But um, there are more meaningful ways now to define ourselves or to make ourselves beautiful, okay? Now, make a list of the stuff that you're good at. It can be anything from drawing or singing to playing a sport or telling a good joke. If you're having trouble with your list, you can ask people around you, your close friends, your parents. Then add a few things to the list that you'd like to be good at, okay? And I'm pretty sure this would include some of your skills or your talents. Uh, no matter what it is, um, you have to, of course, identify your strengths, and from that, you have to be very proud okay, at the things that you're good at. And that way, or that will definitely help improve your self-esteem. Now, give yourself, of course, three compliments every day. And I do this, you know. Sometimes we are longing for appreciation. We are longing for people around us to validate us. But, you know, if we rely on the validation of others, then definitely we'll just hurt it. We'll, we'll keep on hurting ourselves. At the end of the day, no one, uh, I believe that at the end of the day, we should always congratulate ourselves for a hard day's work, for the things that we've accomplished. And you have to give yourself these compliments because you deserve that, okay? Don't just say, I am so great. Be specific about something good about yourself. Like, I was a good friend to, let's say, your friend today, or I did better on the test than yesterday, etc. Well, you're at it before you go to bed every night. List three things in your day that really made you happy or that you feel thankful for. And, you know, with these things in mind, I believe that you'll have a positive, a more positive outlook uh, about yourself. Okay. Third, remember that your body is your own. No matter what shape, size, or color it is. Okay? If you are worried about your weight or size, you can check with your doctor to make sure you're healthy. Now, remind yourself of things about your body that are cool. Let's say my legs are strong and I can skate very well, or I have a good handwriting, I have beautiful eyes, etc. Okay? Remember, again, your body is your own. Now, remember also that there are things about yourself that you can change. As I mentioned earlier, the key here is self-acceptance. You should accept and love these things, okay? Such as your skin color, your shoe size, etc. Okay, and last but not the least, when you hear negative comments in your head, 
tell yourself to stop. Often than not, okay, the this negativities, this self doubt begins within us. Okay, let's admit it. The first person to doubt yourself is also yourself. The first person to say negative things about yourself is also yourself. So, stop. Okay, stop yourself from doing that. Remind yourself of things you're good at, and if you can think of anything again, ask your friends. You can also learn a new skill. Okay, for example, let's say calligraphy, dance, music, etc., so that you will feel good about yourself. All right. Now, by focusing on the good things you do and all your great qualities, you will learn to love and accept yourself. The main ingredient for strong self-esteem, I repeat, accept and love yourself. Even if you've got room for improvements, and who doesn't, right? Knowing what you're good at and that you're valuable and you're special to the people around you that truly cares for you, okay? This will definitely help you and deal with everyday struggles. And of course, with the love and self-acceptance, you'll feel better and you'll feel that you're beautiful in and out. So thank you very much for listening. I'll see you in our next discussion.